Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center Sunday Worship Celebration. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Richard Moran, Senior Minister, and it is a pleasure uh, to have you with us. Uh, we have an another wonderful service today. Uh, Rusty Farrakane will be uh, sharing music with Craig, and uh, we will begin now with a time of prayer and meditation uh, by Reverend Laurie. I invite you to a time of prayer and meditation as we close our outer eyes, taking in a deep cleansing breath and release it slowly. Take in another deep breath and release it slowly as we begin to relax our bodies, as we begin to relax our minds from all the busyness we've experienced so far today, gently letting go of any stress any unease, just gently releasing, breathing in and relaxing, breathing out and opening our hearts, opening our hearts to God's unconditional love for us. God is the one presence and the one power in the universe and in our lives. And God is good all the time. And God only sees good for us. And so as we open our hearts, we allow God's good to unfold in our lives. We recognize that God is our source of everything. Of all the good that we desire, we claim our good now. Of all the prosperity that we desire, we claim our prosperity now of all the health that we desire. We claim our health and wholeness in this very moment, knowing that we are one with the divine, one in presence, one in power, one in strength, and that our faith brings us to wholeness. In this time of quiet contemplation, we recognize the presence of God right here, right now, in us and as us and through us, as close as our own hearts and bigger than the cosmos because it's all God. And we participate in that energy. We are Godlings here to do God's work, to love each other more deeply to recognize there are many points of view and all are needed and all are important. And the more deeply we listen, the more empathically we listen, the more we begin to understand each other and that creates peace on earth. And so from this quiet, still place within, we take just a few moments to move more deeply into the silence as we feel the presence of God within. Sweet Spirit, we are grateful for this time together. We know that we have many blessings and that when we count them and when we're grateful for them, we get many more blessings. Thank you, God, for creating us. Thank you for keeping us safe and healthy and whole. Thank you that we have each other, for each and every one of us is an unrepeatable expression of the divine. And for this, we are truly grateful. And so we say thank you, God, Thank you, God. Thank you, God, and it is so. Amen.
I am one of many with just one life to live. The gifts I have, great and small, I give them all I give. I give simply, purely from my soul. I give. Here I am, a vessel. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you, Craig. That was fabulous. So I was having a chat with my suitcases the other night because we haven't traveled in a year and I had to break the news to them in probably another six months, if not another 12 months before we travel again. Well, it did not go well. They were so upset. And now I'm dealing with emotional baggage. Come on, you gotta love that one. That was so good. I envisioned someone holding up a placard with 10 on it. It was so good. <laughs> you know something else I enjoyed? You remember the movie uh, City Slickers many years ago uh, with Billy Crystal? If you didn't, it, it was about a guy named Mitch, played by Billy Crystal, who was just having a tough time. He was just about to be 40. He felt kind of really lost. He didn't have any direction. And even though he was happily married and had kids and had a job, he just felt lost. And then so he and his two buddies decided to go to a dude ranch, thinking that might help, you know, herding cattle. And so they're doing that, and there was a guy named Curly, a crusty cowboy, tough, played by Jack Palance. And there was a portion where they were um, leading, uh, herding the cattle and leading them, and they were just talking, it was just the two of them. And uh, Curly turns to Mitch and says, you know what the secret of life is? And he says, no. He said, one thing, one thing. And then Billy Crystal's character says, well, what's that one thing? And Curly said, that's what you have to figure out. 
So my question for you this morning is, what is the most important thing for you? What is that one thing? Not the top five things, not the top three things or two things. What is the most important thing? What is that one thing for you? Is it love? Is it peace? Is it your work? Is it awakening? Think about your spiritual life. What is your spiritual life all about? What is the main focus of your entire spiritual life? Do you want enlightenment? And if so, what does enlightenment mean to you? Do you want to achieve a higher level of consciousness? And if so, what does a higher level of consciousness mean to you? You know, when asked what is the most important thing to you, most people look up and ponder curiously. Sometimes playing with some possibilities. Sometimes an expression on the face is like, wow, I never really thought about that till now. Or thinking, hmm, maybe that's a good thing to consider. But when you look at all the people in the world who really excel at something great, whether it's in art or music or athletics or business, I guarantee you every one of them knows what the most important thing is. Warren Buffett knows what the most important thing is. Miles Davis knew what the most important thing was. Michelangelo knew what the most important thing was. Jesus knew what the most important thing was. Buddha knew what the most important thing was. And his was a recognition of the human condition that included suffering and how to help uh, resolve and handle that suffering in life. And what he ended up doing was giving up all that he had, and he had a lot, you know, to, to be a renunciate, to give up everything, to pursue this one thing to make a difference in the world, that one thing that drove him, that utilized all his time and energy to, to help achieve and bring forth. And the fact is, he is a great example, and I don't mean for you to go run out and leave everything, but what he did was he found what was his most important thing, and that is something that we uh, all need to do. And it sounds like a simple question, what is the most important thing? And it is simple, but it is a very deep and profound question. It is one that not just brings clarity, but it invites us in to tap in to that deeper part in us that yearns to know a greater level of meaning. It taps into that part of us that knows that all the money in the world, all the power, all the success, all the food, all the sex, all the luxuries we can think of can never fill a deeper part in us that is always yearning. And when I talk about meaning, um, I don't mean just mean the meaning of life, but the thing that gives your life meaning that br brings you alive, that engages you, you know, that calls out the greatest gifts and greatest joy uh, within you. What is the most important thing to you is a spiritual question, it is a life question, it is a question of being and our very existence. You know, the great spiritual teacher, Ajasanti, uh, in his book, The Most Important Thing, says, the most important thing is to know what the most important thing is for you. He said, no teacher, no matter how wise, no set of teachings, no matter how profound, can be a substitute for your path and discovery of what is the most important thing for you. This question is something that actually deserves time. It's not about rushing to get an answer. It is something that you sit with, that you allow to move through you. You know, to allow yourself to explore and to listen to, you know, and, and to ask. It's about just opening ourselves to the depths of awareness and insight uh, and understanding. You know, it's really uh, about a willingness uh, to be curious, a willingness to look and think in new directions, to allow breakthroughs, you know, to allow transformation uh, to come forth. And the, you know, the role of questions is pretty big in this process of figuring out what that most important thing is, because questions really help take us deeper. There's sometimes we live on the surface uh, of life, but questions really engage us in tapping in to something deeper. You know, we can even expand our questions like, 
What is the most important thing about your family? What is the most important thing about your primary intimate relationship? What is the most important thing about your work and your career? You know, Socrates' famous line, the unexamined life is not worth living, really is a question that invites us to look at how we're living our lives right now, to really do some contemplation and self-reflection, you know, to ask ourselves, is this who I came here to be? Am I doing what I've been called to actually do? And it's important to pause and reflect and contemplate this from time to time because sometimes we could just go along in life and then at the end realize, you know what? Pursuing that wasn't really who I wanted to be, isn't really what I wanted, isn't really what was important to me. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days of your life, the day you were born and the day you discover why. So to find the most important thing, it is a journey, it is a process, and we must go within. And when Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you, that all the understanding, all the wisdom, all the truths, all the yearning that we have, it is a process of going within. When scripture says that to go to that secret place, no one can go to that place for you but you. And it is an important journey and process uh, in our lives. And I would say meditation is really another key part of it. You know, it is what leads us to the path. It's what takes us deeper and what helps us find that one most important thing. So through meditation in this process, the first thing uh, it does is it helps us be honest with ourselves and it helps us make peace with ourselves. Ajasanti uh, has an interesting line, he says, The dirty secret of spirituality is that to truly know yourself is terrifying. Because sometimes we don't want to feel some of the pain of our past. Sometimes we don't want to acknowledge that we're lost or hurt. Sometimes we don't want to feel our shame. Sometimes we don't want to allow ourselves to acknowledge the mistakes we made that might have hurt someone else. We would rather stuff, suppress, hide, run away from all that stuff. We'd rather resist it, reject it, fight against it, and hate it than let ourselves actually feel and acknowledge these things. We'd rather fight against it than accept it and make peace with it. There's a line that says, if you go to war with your mind, you will always be at war. There's a point at which we have to let whatever it is that is in us that we have felt just be to find a place of acceptance and peace and healing with it. So is there something in your life that you still have not accepted and find a hard time accepting? Is there something in your life and within yourself that you have not made peace with? See, meditation in its purest sense is to actually sit and be with ourselves. It is to get to a place of awareness and an observation that whatever it is we feel and come, just don't judge it, don't push it away, just allow it to be where it is so we can find acceptance, so we can find peace, so that we can actually meet ourselves right where we are and love ourselves right there, no matter what we're feeling, no matter what has happened. Because the truth is, if we can't be honest with ourselves and make peace with ourselves. How can we go deeper to feel a oneness with God? Come across an interesting quote by uh, Joseph Campbell, referring to something that Carl Jung said. And he, and he actually said, religion can actually stop us from having a religious experience. <laughs> so as we get so caught up in a dogma and how we should be, You know, even with unity people, we get so positive, sometimes we don't let ourselves acknowledge that we feel a little negative or feel some hurt. And what this is, this whole idea about being honest with ourselves is, how else, if we're not honest with ourselves, how can we explore deeper? How can we open ourselves to things we haven't seen or felt before if we allow ourselves to just be rigid and think we should only be a certain way or feel uh, a certain way? Interesting thing is there's this paradox is that when you don't fight it and you find acceptance, 
it actually deflates and reduces and eases that energy in our lives. You know, it brings a level of peace, it brings a level of clarity, and it opens us to actually go deeper into levels of joy and fulfillment. Being honest with ourselves, making peace with ourselves, and finding acceptance of ourselves and our life is a huge step on that journey of discovering what is truly uh, important to us, that what is in us. The next one that takes us uh, deeper in that meditative process is uh, to trust the unknown. To trust the unknown. One of the things we as human beings aren't as good as, as we think we are is trust. Trusting life. Trusting ourselves. Sometimes even trusting our greatness. Trusting our beauty. Trusting our talent. But also trusting our problems, you know, trusting the things where we have frustration and realizing that all these things are really there for us, not against us. You know, we have a hard time trusting especially the unknown. The unknown freaks us out. We get scared and anxious. I don't know about you, but I have spent hours upon hours freaking out about what might happen and you know, how this might go down, how that might not work. And I'll tell you, 90% of them never even happened. I've invested so much time being scared, anxious, worried, because at some level, I don't quite trust everything will be okay. Sometimes I don't trust if I'll be okay. As soon as I worry, like, I won't be happy if that doesn't happen. You know, and the thing about it is, a deep level of spirituality and connection is to trust the unknown and to realize I don't need to know all the answers right now. I don't need to be in control. I don't need to know how it's going to work out. And to actually find peace from trusting that even if it doesn't work out, that we can actually center into a level of connectedness and know that we're loved and supported and that everything's going to be okay. It's funny, when it's raining and storming, we trust to know that sun's going to come out tomorrow. And yet sometimes when we're lost, we don't always trust that God is there. We don't always trust that everything is going to work out. You know, not just the unknown, but also the difficulties and challenges that we're going through. Can we get to a place that we could trust that in some way that's meant to help us or bless us, you know, or increase our awareness or our peace of mind? I bet every single one of us, our greatest lesson that we've learned or some of the big ones were some difficulty we went through. And somewhere along the road, we could look back and think, wow, that really helped me be stronger or set better boundaries or get greater clarity or have greater faith. And so in the same way that we could look back and realize previous difficulties have brought some good to us, can we trust whatever we're facing now and realize that at some point we will be able to see the good and to trust it now even though we can't, can't quite see it yet. So in this process to find out what is this most important thing, it's a process of going deeper, starting with being honest with ourselves and making peace and ex finding acceptance and then it's a matter of trust. Trusting life, trusting ourselves, trusting our difficulties, trusting that everything will be okay, that there is something greater available to us, supporting us, you know, sustaining us, and guiding us. And the last one we'll talk about is that the deeper we go in listening, it brings uh, what Adjastante calls vitality moments. Moments where there is maybe profound release in feeling peace of the past, or vitality moments um, where we get an understanding or an insight of a situation that puts a new perspective on it. Maybe it's a vitality moment of telling us to move in a new path, to move in a new direction. And maybe it's a, a vitality moment of having some greater awakening or something to let go or stop doing in our life. You know, the deeper we go, the more we listen, these vitality moments of inspiration and clarity will come. Not things to try and force, but things to actually allow 
by immersing ourselves in a consciousness and a willingness to listen and to listen at a higher level. And that's why these questions are so important. What is the one and most important thing in your life to you? And to literally listen and meditate and to open our minds to explore is such an important thing. Asking ourselves, am I living as fully as I'm meant to live? In, you know, in what area am I holding back? You know, in, in what area do I think needs to, to change or be transformed? Now, who have I come here to be? Now, all these questions sound different, but I guarantee you they're actually all connected to what our higher purpose is. And this isn't a ask a question, get a quick answer thing. It is a looking at our entire lives as an ongoing journey and process and contemplating on these and giving it the time it needs to percolate. You know, giving it the time it needs for contemplation and to unfold in an amazing and wonderful way. You know, sometimes we think we're just our job and all these things, but there's something actually higher going on that a deeper level of meaning and fulfillment if we are willing to take that journey because it is a journey of self-discovery. It is a journey of unifying with our spirit and expressing and letting that unfold in an amazing and wonderful way. It's not just for Buddhas or Jesus you know, or, or top level. It's for all of us. We have this available to us, within us, if we're willing to take that journey. A friend of mine, Bob Kaler, um, from Richmond Hill, Ontario, gives one of my favorite quotes, and it is this. On the day you were born, you were given the opportunity of a lifetime. So are you happy with what you're doing with your opportunity of a lifetime? See, looking for that most important thing is really an invitation to examine not only how we're living, but to go deeper, to connect at a higher level of spirit to see if we're expressing all that we came here to express and to be. And the way to do that is through meditation, of going in. Only we can do this for ourselves. And allowing meditation to let us be honest with ourselves, to find acceptance and make peace, to allowing meditation to help us trust life, trust ourselves, and especially trust the unknown. And finally, to allow ourselves um, the opportunity to explore and ask ourselves deeper questions and listen. Because when we do those moments, vitality moments will come forth where we feel more awakened, where we feel more alive. This is the path to a fuller life. This is the path to a life of greater meaning. And it all centers around finding that one thing. Finding the most important thing to you. Enjoy the journey. God bless you. It's that time in our service to give of our gifts and our tithes and our offerings. We're so grateful to those of you who've sent in checks, who are using our online donation button. We're so grateful for the fact that you're continuing to support our ministry, even though we can't be physically present with, with, with each other. Our offering blessing is divine love through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Will you affirm that with me? Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so we say thank you, Mother, Father, God, for these gifts, for these tithes, these offerings. We know they are given in love, and they are received in love, and that they move through this ministry with the energy of divine love out into the world as good. And each giver is blessed, heaped up, pressed down, and overflowing, for that is a law, and so it is. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, it's been really wonderful to spend some time with you. We hope you have an amazing week as you go forward. Remember, God is always here for you and for me and for each other. So stay safe, stay healthy, and will you affirm the prayer for protection with me? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Thank you for being here. Have a blessed week.